in today's video, I want to talk to you about what mascara should you use, what mascara is right for you, and kind of understanding all of the different terms and things like that. And just a pre-warning, I am sure that I'm going to forget something in this video, straight up. There are so many different things to discuss when it comes to mascaras, different wand types, different formula types, different colors, waterproof, non-waterproof, I'm sure I'm going to forget something, so we'll probably have to have a part two or a follow-up, but if there are any questions you have during any time of this video, please post a comment just as soon as it pops into your mind and I will try to respond to it, or I will try to film another video or a blog post in the future. Um, but today, I want to talk to you about different kinds of mascara and talk to you about what might be right for you. And we'll first start off with kind of some of the more basic things before we get into like wands and brushes and stuff like that. But first off, there are so many different kinds of mascaras, but we can kind of categorize them into around three or four. And the first is lengthening, um, volumizing, defining, and curling. So that's like four. So the first one is lengthening, and lengthening is pretty self-explanatory. Lengthening means just adding length. So there can be some mascaras that are lengthening and volumizing, or two in one. And that means it does two things, but if it says lengthening without anything else, that basically means adding length. And that can be done in many different ways. Sometimes it just coats the lashes all the way to the end. Sometimes they actually have fibers in them, such as nylon, or I've seen carbon or silicone fibers that actually like if you can imagine like little strings that hang onto your individual eyelashes and like lengthen them. So that's why sometimes like with Too Faced you have like a step one which is just kind of white fibers and a step two which is your actual coating of color. So that is what a lengthening mascara is. Next, what is a volumizing mascara? A volumizing mascara is something that will give you volume, usually closer to the lash line. Usually when you think of a volumizing mascara, it's not volumizing everything here on the top. That's what lengthening does. Volume usually makes it look very, very thick, not necessarily clumpy, but very thick and very full by the bottom and the outer corners, like kind of by your actual lash bed. Um, this is great if you want a very dramatic look. For instance, um, if you use a regular mascara, sometimes you notice you still need an eyeliner. If you use a very, very volumizing mascara, you may not even need an eyeliner because it is so black and so dense. Now, in my personal experience, volumizing mascaras can be clumpy. Not all of them are, but just find one that kind of works for you. And my personal favorite combination is volumizing and lengthening because those are the two things that I like most. Um, the third thing is defining. Defining basically means to enhance your natural lashes, which is basically just kind of a coat of color. So it doesn't necessarily mean lengthening them. It doesn't necessarily making them more volumized or thicker. It doesn't necessarily making, mean making them more curly. It just means taking your lashes that you already have and coating them in a specific color top to bottom and really defining their natural look. Now um, some people might be like, oh my god, I always want my lashes to be bigger. Why would you ever want to just leave your lashes natural leave your lashes naturally? But there are some people who naturally have such very thick or such very long lashes that if they put lengthening mascara on, it's like it curls into itself and it's poking them up on their um, eyebrows or, you know, it's just too black for them or too thick for everyday wear. Um, so defining is great for just an everyday look. Um, even if you don't have super full eyelashes, it's perfect, just a perfect touch of natural looking uh, mascara to finish anything off. So. The th fourth thing is curling, and curling mascaras do exactly that. They're meant to curl your lashes. And different mascaras do this in different ways, but basically it's the idea that the mascara goes on wet, and as it dries, it kind of tightens. And as it starts to tighten up, it starts to curl your lashes, because naturally they are a little bit curly. Um, who is a curling mascara right for? Personally, I have curly lashes to begin with, and when I use curling mascara, it is a hot mess because literally my lashes kind of like hush your muffins phone. I swear to God, like this phone is always going off even when I try not to. Um, I have like family members in the hospital though, so it's like hush your muffins. So it's like I can't leave it on silent, which is really annoying. But curling mascaras for me, since I do have naturally curly lashes, they kind of like stab me in my own eye socket and I'm like, ow, do you really have to do that? So I am not personally a fan of curling mascaras, but if you have a minimal curl or if you're the kind of person who curls your lashes every single time before you put on mascara, then a curling mascara is perfect for you. Or if you have very, very straight lashes and you want them to be a little bit more curly. Now there are like heated curlers. I wouldn't heat your eyelashes. Um, I haven't tried them. I just, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, get a mascara that'll do that for you. 
Next, waterproof or non-waterproof. Um, and this is more than just going in the water. Non-waterproof just basically means it's easier to remove. So when would you use waterproof? Obviously if you're going swimming, but many times if you're not. Um, for me, I have very oily lids and sometimes I need a waterproof mascara, otherwise the mascara will come off all over my lids if I'm sweating or oily or things like that. So although waterproof is good for the water, it's also good for long wear. If you want to go from morning to late, late at night, if you're going to be dancing, sweating, um, running, anything that can kind of mess it up, waterproof is for you for that occasion. Um, the other thing is that it is harder to remove. Now, if you're not very oily, if you're not sweating that day, if you're only wearing your mascara to school or to the work day and then taking it off when you get home, a regular non-waterproof mascara is perfect for you because you can get it on and off easily and it does its job. Next, we can start talking about wands and actually I was going to discuss that and formulations within this video but this video is also already very long and to be honest like now that I think about it I should probably hold up like every single mascara um, so we're just not going to discuss wands in this video I guess we're gonna have to have a part two because literally there are so many different kinds of wands that volumize curl or do both synthetic fibers curled twisted those big silicone ones that look like a big death ball stick, like, uh, there are so many out there. The very last thing we'll talk about is color, and we'll just discuss some of the basics. The first is black. Black is kind of a staple, a go-to. It looks good on everyone. Um, the second one is brown. If you do want something a little bit more natural, I would recommend going with a brown because it's not as intense as a black. Also, if you do have um, very, very, um, like, if you're going for a very, very dark look, then sometimes black mascara can be overwhelming. So sometimes you want to do either brown liner and black mascara or black brown liner and black mascara or brown mascara and black liner um, to kind of vary it up a little bit if you don't want to go too intense. Um, also if you naturally have very very fair um, skin and hair and eyes and you find it very hard to pull off different colors or different trends and you think that black just makes you look like a raccoon, brown is a great way to go because it is more natural but it still defines you um, and kind of works with your complementary colors, especially if you're like a redhead or a ginger, um, brown just looks great on those eyes. Um, the very last one is color and color is just for anyone who wants to step outside of the box. Um, the main colors are greens, blues, and purples. The darker you go, the more natural it will look. Obviously, the more neon you go, the more neon it will look. But um, winter color mascara is good whenever you want to make a fun pop of a statement. Now, there we do have a video on... A, colored mascaras, which I will link to you, but um, if you really, really, really want to make your eyes pop and glisten and sparkle every single day without a lot of work, pick up a colored mascara that's a dark blue or a dark purple or a dark green. Hush your muffins phone! Dear Lord, now it's that phone! Do you hear this? Do you hear this? We're going to ignore it and pretend like it's not there. Sound good? Sound good. This is my life. Waiting! How many times is this thing gonna ring? Um, but the biggest tip is to buy a mascara in a color that is very, very dark. The reason why is because the darker it looks, it'll look closer to black, so it looks natural. But the way that color reflects against your eyes, and it's like a complementary color, it's so close, it really brings out specific colors in your eyes and just makes them glisten and pop. So if you don't have a lot of time to get ready, but you really want to make a statement and make your eyes look really popped and gorgeous, um, that is one of my personal favorite tips that I'd recommend to you. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what questions you have or if you do want a brush wand video in the future. Um, but I love you guys. I really do hope this helped, and I cannot wait to talk to you all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.